Jana, let's talk about the universe in terms of its uh, size. Is it infinite or finite? This is a very deep fundamental question. And uh, my understanding, not as a professional uh, uh, astrophysicist, is that conventional cosmological wisdom today leans toward not only an infinite multiverse driven by chaotic uh, um, eternal inflation uh, or other, other mechanisms, but also that each so-called pocket universe within that multiverse is also, when you're inside of it, also infinite. And mm -hmm. so you have two, a nesting of infinities in terms of size, if that's the right term, in, in describing the totality of reality. So um, I, I think you make a case, at least that we should consider seriously that the universe is finite uh, mm -hmm. and perhaps using extra dimensions to to uh, achieve that. So uh, I'm really interested in your perspective. Well, I, I have to say, I think extra dimensions is the most interesting part of that conversation. So you just talked about a multiverse. Um, when a lot of models were started to try to understand the universe, they were looking at extra dimensions as a way to maybe predict the laws of physics, maybe the shape and size and the topology, which is a kind of origami way in which they're wrapped yeah. up. Um, would predict for us why there's electrons and quarks and why things are heavy or light or all these things would be predicted and there would be one model uh, so there would be one specific internal dimension that had such compelling properties that we decided that's the one we lived in what happened was quite contrary there ended up being huge number of proliferation of possibilities all of which were hard to distinguish and we couldn't figure out which one was the model and then we kind of gave over culturally to this multiverse idea the idea that maybe we just live in one of these infinite number of possibilities. But I will say that many of those possibilities, most of them, maybe all of them, involve finite dimensions. Those dimensions are not infinite. They are, there is maybe there's three large spatial dimensions where we are, but maybe not somewhere else. But even where we are, there might be six more wrapped up internal dimensions and they're all finite. So you'd really have to be saying, oh, I'm splitting the universe into finite pieces and infinite pieces. So the large dimensions that we live in that we see full of galaxies and black holes and stars and all of these wonderful things is infinite. But this, earth, this, this internal space is finite and wrapped up. And that seems a little undiplomatic. I would say. Uh, I would like to imagine that if a universe is really starting in a big bang, everything's small, everything's wrapped up into origami, everything's finite. And what we're trying to understand is why did a large number of these internal dimensions stay small, wrap up, curl up real tight, and why did the others balloon out hmm. and become so large? Okay, now when we're talking about extra dimensions in this cosmological uh, uh, approach to infinite finite, how is that articulating with the extra dimensions in, in string theory where this number, I think, you know, 10 to the 500 different different origami, as, as you nicely put it, uh, yeah. work? Uh, are those the same thing or, or different? They're, they're, you can have the extra dimensions without string theory. It's unclear if you can have string theory without the extra dimensions. Right, right, right. For sure. <laughs> so, um, so string theory certainly made uh, the conversation about extra dimensions seem more earnest. Mm -hmm because it required them. Mm. It required them to make mathematical sense. It felt like a prediction. It felt like string theory was predicting that there were extra spatial dimensions. And that's pretty thrilling. Now, I don't need to be a string theorist to play the game, which I do all the time. I love working on extra spatial dimensions, one of my favorite pastimes, uh, to play the game of what if the universe is wrapped up in this particular way? So I don't have to apply or, or impose st string theoretic constraints on it to, to play that game, to think about the space time. Uh, but is this, the structure of these extra dimensions uh, the same um, in the um, in the microphysics of where string theory would be and the macrophysics of, of cosmology to get a finite universe? Are we dealing with the exact same thing? In other words, the, the um, extra dimensions of the, the microphysics is what generates the, the, the the finitude of the universe on a macro scale. 
Um, I, I think you, you have to separate those a little bit. It could be the case. There's, there's two things to separate. One is to say string theory is more restricted because it's trying to match certain predictions. It's trying to meet certain constraints. So the, 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 the possibilities it considers are called kalabi yau manifolds, mm -hmm. and they have certain restrictive properties. The kalabi yau manifolds, sometimes it's very hard to know anything about some of them. So they're kind of studied individually, but you can't study all of them. There's, a lot, there's an infinite number possibly, or maybe there's only 500, but, um, or 10 to the 500. 10 to the 500, yeah. 500 but, um, but I can also just say, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not really interested in string theory. I don't think that's going to be the right quantum gravity theory, but I do think that there are extra spatial dimensions. Okay. I think that they're hiding, let's say, dark energy. I think dark energy is a quantum energy trapped in extra spatial dimensions. Mm -hmm. That's a real possibility. Yeah. And and dark energy is evidence that there are these extra spatial dimensions and it's not connected with string theory. It's just quantum mechanics on an on a space time with a wrapped up dimension. Those dimensions are not restricted to be Clabial manifolds, first of all. They may have other restrictions to make sense, and we struggle with that all the time. What are their properties? What do they have to be? Now there's a dynamical question, which is in the beginning, if I imagine a universe where all of the dimensions are folded up on an equal footing. And uh, is there a dynamical reason why the quantum energy in a handful of dimensions would cinch down and blow up the large dimensions, yeah. actually create the large dimensions on a different footing because of the way that they're wrapped up? And this is also stuff we, we struggle with. Could we stabilize those internal dimensions in such a way that they explain the dark energy and the inflation of the large dimensions? Mm. Nobody's done it quite perfectly yet. Uh, but it's interesting. It's intriguing. And so what would the implications of that be either way for the uh, infinitude of the totality of reality, whether that's one universe or multiple universes, number one? And number mm -hmm. two, what about if there is a multiverse for each pocket universe, can they be infinite within that pocket universe, even though outside that pocket universe, it just looks like one of uh, a, a, an infinite series within the multiverse? I, I think we don't know the answers to those questions. It might be that when Copernicus deposed us from the center of the solar system, we realized there are other planets. And then there's other, then <laughs> Hubble tells us there's other galaxies. Yep. There's billions of them. We might just have to live with this. Now there's all these universes. Um, is, does that mean that they're infinite? I doubt there's an infinite number of galaxies. I don't think that that seems rational, but, uh, but, it is foisted on us that we are we are we are one tiny example in a proliferation of possibilities that I feel is something we have to come to terms with. And uh, whether it's ex really infinite, I don't know, it doesn't seem terribly physical to me. On the other hand, a lot of these things can be surprising. So, you know, I I have intuitions that I pursue, but I would never say I believe the universe is finite. I would never say that. Mm. Is it possible that some of these are infinite? I suppose it's possible. In considering whether each individual pocket universe, uh, irrespective of whether there is a multiverse, is finite or infinite, um, how does uh, the sitter space come into the conversation with its uh, positive curvature, anti the sitter space with the uh, uh, the negative cur curvature, so, so the so-called saddle. Um, uh, uh, are these just theoretical terms or is there ways to, to actually yeah. make progress? Well, they are theoretical, but, uh, and, and they, are, they are convenient terrains on which to study things. If you're gonna uh, have a laboratory in a chemistry lab, you're gonna make a flat table. You're not gonna make something difficult to work on. And so theoretically, we choose simple tables to work on, really to calculate on and to look on. Does that mean that, that that's going to be our universe? Uh, well, that we can't say, but it does it. It also makes it still makes some very valuable laboratories. Mm -hmm. And um, so to sitter space is interesting because the universe does seem to be accelerating and uh, it does seem to be dominated by a constant energy everywhere. And that sounds a lot like de Sitter space. Now, is it literally de Sitter infinity out to infinity or does it peter out and die off and change and get more complicated beyond the observable horizon? 
that we can't say. But the sitter does seem to look like a reasonable description of the universe now when it's the expansion is dominated by dark energy and possibly very, very early in the universe's history. Um, would, would any astronomical observations uh, in, in principle, in theory, address this infinite, finite uh, conundrum of at least our universe, our observable universe? It's a tough one. I don't... Uh, I don't yet know of a way to prove something is infinite. Um, I do know of ways to prove that the universe is finite. So, so if, okay, well, so, what would what would that be? I mean, if you see the same this the same galaxy through uh, gravitational lensing or something right. in two separate directions, then you you you'd see more of it would a. Be hard, it would be hard to know, but the universe would have to be improbably small. So, I do want to. Uh, put out a disclaimer, which is a lot of us who are thinking about what might the universe look like if it was finite on the large dimensions. Yeah. We weren't we weren't in any way believing we were going to get an observation, but we had to see it through to the end. Sure. Because that's what scientists does. Sure. You know, maybe, you never know. I think most of us thought, oh, this is terribly, terribly unlikely. But it was a very interesting process and problem, and it gave insight into things like the extra dimensions. But exactly what you're saying, if if the universe is literally finite, it's still connected. It's not like it has an edge and you sail right. off the edge of the earth, you're, you sail off the edge of the universe. It's not like that. It's it's connected in the way the earth is. If you travel in a straight line as you can, you come back to where you started. You go in a spaceship, you come back to where you started. That means that the light can do that too. So you might be looking at what seems to be a distant galaxy, but it's really the Milky Way and the light has wrapped around and around and you happen to catch it and you're seeing your own galaxy as it was in the past. Um, this kind of hall of mirrors effect can be proven. I don't think we'll see that. And then there's very subtle signatures and the light left over from the Big Bang. Uh, uh, the reason why my first book was called How the Universe Got Its Spots is because you can tell the shape and size of a developing embryo from the pattern right, of amazing. spots. Right. And so we were using exactly the same mathematics to say, oh, if I know the shape and size of the universe, I can predict the hot and cold spots uh, and the light left over from the Big Bang. Mm. Yeah. Um, so far, no evidence. Uh, 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 amazing. I think that the theoretical approach to uh, ask in principle how you could determine a finite universe is a really valuable exercise, even if it's in impossible or, or likely impossible in, in uh, practice. Hmm. And it is amazing how nature replicates similar phenomena, that uh, the, the mathematics is so similar that you're solving when you're trying to understand a leopard spots versus a zebra stripes, hmm. as when you're trying to look at the light left over from the Big Bang in a finite embryonic universe. It's really quite magical how nature <laughs> scales like that. Yeah, and that's general systems theory, that there's the same yeah. kinds of ideas work at vastly different yeah. orders of magnitude, which is a fascinating area to, to explore. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you make one uh, a comment in, in your book, or one idea which I found really intriguing. I'm not sure I understand it completely, but it was a, 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 a thought experiment, a suggestion, perhaps, if I got it right, uh, that um, insights can be gleaned into the the uh, nature of the concrete universe and its origins from recognizing the um, the characterization of abstract mathematical incompleteness. So Gurnall's mm -hmm. theory of mathematical incompleteness, you reference in terms of understanding the con the the concrete universe. I get that sort of right. Yeah, actually, it's some, it's a project I never fully executed. It's one of these dream projects that one day, when life is less hectic, <laughs> I'll just, you know, put my feet up and uh, ruminate. Um, there is something fascinating about Gödel's incompleteness theorems for the theory of everything of mathematics. It really ensures that there can be no theory of everything for mathematics. It says very simply that even in a system as simple as arithmetic, that there are facts about numbers that we will never be able to prove are true. Mm -hmm. And there is no theory of everything of mathematics. So what if we took that lesson for physics and we said, look, whatever's responsible for the origin of the universe, it might be like a Godelian tangle. It might not be something we can approach on the nose by proving theorems. Maybe it's something we can recognize its veracity 
but also understand that it's unprovable in a very formal way. That maybe the beginning of the universe says something about the laws of physics that are encoded in the very statement. And that kind of Godelian loop that, that we get into might be something to consider for our understanding of the origin of the universe or the laws of physics. Well, I'm for your getting the time to put your feet up and considering that, because either way, whatever you would conclude, even if it was inconclusive, I think would be a valuable contribution. Thank you so much, Robert. <laughs>